In this chapter, we will discuss the construction, features, and functions of structural PPE. You need to know your gear. That's the bottom line. You need to know what it can do and what it can't do. You can't just put it on and expect it to save you from every situation. You know, it's, it's only designed to take you to a point where you can help mitigate an emergency. You need to know your gear inside and out, literally. Your uh, protective ensemble is, is more than just your turnouts. It's turnouts, it's helmets, it's boots, it's gloves, and, and don't forget the hoods like a lot of people do. But let's start with turnouts. The turnout coat and pants have, have three primary layers within them. There's the outer shell, and the purpose of the outer shell is to resist flame ignition and to protect the internal layers, which are the thermal barrier and the moisture barrier. The outer shell is made from self-extinguishing fibers, and they will not support combustion. But that doesn't mean that they won't burn. Uh, if, you're, if you keep them in the flame, they're going to burn. The moisture barrier and the thermal barrier make up the inner lining of your turnout. Typically, these two barriers are sewn together as a unit and fastened to the outer shell. They must be removable so they can be cleaned separately. The moisture barrier is constructed of a water-resistant film laminated to a flame-resistant substrate. This is engineered to resist outside penetration from water in order to keep the thermal barrier dry. It's also tested against common fire ground chemicals and bloodborne pathogens. The moisture barrier is breathable. It allows perspiration in the form of vapor that's produced by your body to escape. The real job of the moisture barrier is to keep the thermal barrier dry. Like the insulation that's in the roof of your house, dry thermal insulation works and wet thermal insulation doesn't work. And the thermal barrier, which provides somewhere between 50 and 70 percent of your thermal protection, is constructed of flame-resistant non-woven fabrics. These layers of fabrics create thousands of air pockets that are insulation against heat exchange. These layers are attached to a woven face cloth. That's what you see when you open up a turnout coat, the part that you see on the inside. That's the face cloth that's quilted to your thermal insulation. You need to be aware that if the air that's trapped inside your thermal barrier is displaced by water or is compressed, it's going to reduce the protection that you have come to expect from that thermal barrier. In 2007, NFPA 1971 standard required that the DRD be integrated into the turnout coat. If a firefighter is incapacitated and the environment requires immediate removal, the DRD can be deployed for a solo or a two-person rescue effort. Closure systems are located on the front of the coat and pants. When properly fastened, they help guard against the coat or pants coming open during structural firefighting activities. Your coat's collar must be raised and secured with a hook and loop closure or throat tab if you have one. Retro-reflective and fluorescent trim improves visibility in low light and daytime conditions. This increases the chance of being seen and decreases the probability of injury. That's why you must wear your NFPA 1971 compliant turnout gear at all times during any emergency operation near roads and highways. Reinforcements are additional layers of material that provide additional protection against heat and flame, cuts and abrasion. They are typically found on shoulders, elbows, sleeve cuffs, knees and pants cuffs. Important safety, cleaning and information labels are inside your coat and pants. Your helmet shell is your first line of defense against blunt or sharp objects, heat, flame, and steam. Your helmet shell can come in many different styles. You can have a modern style, which is similar to this. There's also a traditional style available. Your helmet shell may or may not include an impact cap. The impact cap sets inside the helmet shell, and it absorbs harmful energy if the helmet is struck. It also provides limited protection against heat and flame. The headband sits inside the helmet and attaches the helmet to the firefighter's head. You can adjust the circumference of the helmet by adjusting the geared knob on the ratchet system.
Your helmet will also include a suspension system, which is inside the helmet. Suspension system will rest on the top of your head, and if the helmet is struck, it will dissipate the energy. The ear neck protector hangs from the underside of your helmet. It should overlap the collar of your turnout coat. The ear neck protector provides limited protection to the head, neck, and ears. A face shield or goggles protect your eyes from heat, flame, and debris. In hazardous environments, you must wear an SCBA with an approved face piece, but a secondary eye protection must be included on your helmet. Flip downs are also provided if chosen, but they are not NFPA compliant. Your fire helmet includes an adjustable chin strap to secure the fire helmet to your head. You must wear a protective hood in combination with the ear and neck protector as part of your protective ensemble. The item you see here is a structural firefighting hood. It can be made from a number of FR knit materials that are available out on the market today. Its two primary purposes are to number one, give you thermal protection around your head and neck area, but number two, to also give you an interface between your helmet, your face piece, and your turnout gear. The three main components or parts of the hood are at the bottom here where you can see the shroud. Then you have the main hood area that's designed to go around the sides and the back of your head, and then the face opening that integrates with your face piece. Structural firefighting boots are made up of three layers, the outer shell, moisture barrier, and thermal liner. The outer shell is made of either leather or rubber, and it is designed to protect against heat and flame, as well as abrasion and puncture resistance. The moisture barrier and thermal layer are sewn together. They're designed in a manner so that it doesn't pull out when you're doffing your boot. The moisture barrier protects against moisture penetration, but it's also breathable at the same time, so it allows moisture vapor to escape outward. The thermal layer is there for comfort, but it also protects the fragile moisture barrier layer, and it also wicks sweat away from your body. In addition, the toe is designed to protect against impact and compression. It usually includes a reinforcing material to reduce wear and tear while crawling. The lower portion of the boot is made up of a welt, the inner sole, the midsole, and the outer sole. The welt is where the upper boot is attached to the lower. It provides protection against liquid penetration. The inner sole provides puncture resistance. A metal shank is sandwiched between the inner sole and midsole. The shank provides additional stability when standing or walking on uneven surfaces. The outer sole offers abrasion resistance, conductive heat resistance, and traction. It's also important to make sure you have the proper fit and make sure that you have very good ankle support within your boot to keep your heel from riding up and down because if it rides up and down it will create blisters. If your boot doesn't fit properly and your heel is riding up and down, be sure to contact your company officer or supervisor. There's two different cuff styles you're typically going to see on a glove that's out in the market. The first cuff style is an example here called the gauntlet. The gauntlet is an extension of the wrist area that's typically made by the same fabric used to make the shell of the glove and has no elasticity in it. The second option would be what they call a wristlet. The wristlet is a knit product that's sewn onto the wristlet of the glove and it extends up your forearm and it has some elasticity to it. Both meet NFPA overlap requirements. We utilize three different layers of material to give you the protection that you need. The first layer that you'll notice is the outer shell. The outer shell is typically made by leather or some other type of flame resistant uh, textile. Uh, its main purpose is to give you protection against flame, heat, and abrasion resistance. Inside that layer you'll notice that there's a moisture barrier. The moisture barrier uh, is to keep the interior part of the glove dry, but because it's breathable it also allows moisture release away from you. It guards against penetration of bloodborne pathogens and the basic fire ground chemicals. The second purpose of the moisture barrier is to protect the thermal liner. 
The air spaces in the thermoliner provide limited protection against the penetration of the radiant heat on the gloves. Burns to the hands can occur when the radiant heat overcomes these insulative air pockets, irrespective of whether you're touching any hot objects or the ambient temperature is elevated.